shall be king hereafter. this revision guide to shake the Shakespeare text Macbeth. Please look at the screen and read this user's guide how best to use this resource. Pause the video if you need to. Today's video is going to focus on the porter. This of course is the porter at the doorway into Macbeth's castle um, located here in Macbeth, Scotland. We're going to cover AO1, understanding what the play is about, and AO2, its language, form, and structure. Here is then the uh, hierarchy in Macbeth's time. Duncan at the top um, with his princes, Malcolm and Donalbane. Then under that you've got the nobility, the thanes, that would be Macbeth and Macduff, with Lady Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, Macduff alongside them. Then you've got the minor lords, Ross, Banquo, Seaward, um, next to them with their sons, Flints and Young Seaward. And then lastly at the bottom, you've got the witches with their own chain of uh, command there. Hecate, Hecate at the top and then the three weird sisters who follow her. The porter, you notice, is not featured on there. As with any character, you need to think about the Great Chain of Being. If you're not sure what the Great Chain of Being is, uh, please pause this video and read the information currently on the screen. And the porter fits in round about there. He is a member of the working class. Contextually, the porter is a servant in Macbeth's castle. His job is to answer the door and move people's bags. He is based on the medieval play notion of the porter as a character who lets sinners into hell. How does the porter fit into Macbeth's main themes? Well, of course, the porter is aware of Macbeth's ambition, or more importantly, Macbeth's power, um, but seems to mock and laugh at him. Um, the porter seems to view Macbeth's castle as hell, so perhaps this shows the working class viewpoint um, or a different version of reality as Macbeth sinks to lower depths, his castle goes to hell with him. Um, we've got a link to the supernatural there um, with this increased knocking as if it's like Macbeth's ribcage that the porter is trapped in. Um, and of course there could be tenuous links made to violence and time as well. What does Shakespeare want us to remember the porter for? Well, he's the man who breaks the tension in the play by using sexual innuendo just before we find out that Macbeth killed Duncan. He is, in effect, then, the light relief um, in the, one of the most serious parts of the play. Well, the only thing Shakespeare really tells us about the porter is that he is a friend. Shakespeare deliberately makes the porter the comic relief for the groundlings, or he helps build the tension as we wait to see Macbeth if Macbeth committed the crime of treason. If you watch the play live, it's probably the porter that actually you remember the most. What does the porter represent then? Well, Shakespeare challenges us to explore Macbeth's notions of masculinity and fertility through the jokes the porter makes, and regard Macbeth's evil as obvious, even to the lowest members of society. The porter appears in Act 2, Scene 3. The porter speaks to the audience about the atmosphere in Macbeth's castle being like hell, and it's the porter that lets Macduff in. Apologies for the wrong apostrophe there. Offstage, the porter also allows Macbeth to clean the blood off his hands um, so he isn't discovered. In effect, it is the working class then that make Macbeth king. 
Let's watch the scene of the porter. Here's a knocking indeed. A man with a porter of hell gate, he should have all turning the key. No, no, no. Who's there? In the name of Beelzebub. Uh, see, here's a farmer that hanged himself <laughs> on the expectation of plenty. Oh, come in, time server. It have napkins enough about you. Here you'll sweat for it. No, no, who's there in the uh, other devil's name? Faith. Here's an equivocator who can swear, eh, in both the scale against either scale, who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet could not equivocate to heaven. Come in, equivocator. No, 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 who's there? Faith. Here's an English tailor who come here for stealing. Oh, yeah. Out of a friend's holes. Uh, oh, ha, 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 ha. Ah, come in, Taylor. Here you may have lost your goose. No, no, never that quiet. What are you? Ah, but this place is too cold for hell. <coughs> I'll devil portrait no further. I had thought to have let in some of all professions. That go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Anon. Anon. I pray you, remember the porter. <laughs> Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Faith, sir. We was carousing. Till the second cock <laughs> and ate drink, sir. Oh, it's a great provoker. Of three things. Well, what three things does drink especially provoke? Marry, sir, no painting, sleep and urine. <laughs> oh, lecture, sir. Drink provokes and unprovokes. Yes, it provokes a desire, but it takes away the performance. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator. With lecture, it makes him and it mars him. It sets him on, it takes him off, it makes him stand to, and not stand to. In conclusion, equivocates him in a sleep, and giving him the lie, leaves him. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. That it did, sir, in the very throat of me. <laughs> Macduff doesn't seem overly impressed then with the porter's sexual innuendo, um, which he seems to be uh, hinting at Macbeth's lack of performance in the bedroom. Let's look at some of the language the porter uses there, as he covers all the main themes of the play. Shakespeare takes the knocking of Macbeth's heart when he met the witches and makes it physical. The knocking at the gate is regular, just like the heartbeat. Shakespeare confronts us with the image of knocking of Macduff, so Macduff, Macduff represents the goodness inside Macbeth. Shakespeare uses context and satire here, as there was an abundance of crops in 1606 and so links to the groundlings. We're given the image of a farmer who takes his own life, which suggests the consequence of greed and foreshadows Macbeth's own death. Shakespeare uses a semantic field of hell to suggest that the cast is transformed into hell, now Duncan is dead. Perhaps Shakespeare is suggesting to us the porter is slow to answer the door as so many souls are being sent to hell. On the surface, Shakespeare simply reminds us to look after those that we serve with the line, I pray you remember the porter. But he's also challenging us to listen closely to this seemingly drunk man's words, which link to all the key themes of the play. The porter repeatedly mentions an equivocator, 
Shakespeare, this is Shakespeare adding a bit of satire for the 1606 audience. Shakespeare references the gunpowder plot here. Henry Garnet was a priest who was hung in 1606 for his part in the plot. He used equivocation in his trial. He lies to get out of prison. He later pretended his lies weren't lies as he was lying for God. This theme is present in the witches who use equivocation to manipulate Macbeth. Let's look a bit closer then at the exchange between Macduff and the porter. Shakespeare devolves the humour to base level. The porter links drinking to much to, too much to three conclusions, nose painting, sleep and urine. Each could be said to be symbolic. Nose painting represents acting or pretense. Sleep implies to us a sense of a dream world after Duncan's death, and urine is dirty water, implying the innocent and pure world at the start of the play has been intoxicated. Shakespeare then develops the scene further by lowering the tone to sexual innuendo. It takes away the performance, implies a lack of sex drive due to alcohol, but also cleverly links to Lady Macbeth's view of Macbeth as impotent and or filling her filling him with spirits to manipulate him. The fact that is the porter speaking suggests to us how well known Macbeth's flaws are in the castle. The theme is continued and exaggerated. It makes him, it mars him, it sets him on and takes him off, makes him stand to and not stand to. As the porter becomes more and more graphic regarding Macbeth's lack of erection and or masculinity. What do we learn from this scene? Some key quotes then for you to jot down and brainstorm. And what does Shakespeare want us to think? Well, Shakespeare presents the porter as a seemingly comic interlude in a very tense part of the play. He uses a range of comic traditions to appeal to different parts of society. Shakespeare deliberately starts the porter's speech using satire and wit, but soon he has him degenerate to toilet humour and vulgarity, symbolising Macbeth's own fall from grace. We are supposed to like the porter and remember his words, effectively delivered through performance that stands out against the backdrop of depression and murder. Some key quotes then and explanations from the porter. Let's move on then to essay skills. Now, you wouldn't be asked a question about the porter in the whole play, as he only appears once, but it could come up as an extract or the extract could be used as part of a theme-based response. Is a knocking indeed. If a man were a portrait of Hellgate, he should have all turning the key. Knock, knock. Who's there in the name of Beelzebub? It is a farmer. Who eh, hanged himself in the expectation of plenty? Come in time, have napkins in now about you. Here you sweat for it. Knock, knock. Who's there? The other devil's name. It is an equivocator. Who could equivocate in both scales against either scale? Who committed treason enough, for God's sake, but could not equivocate? The heaven. Oh, come in! Oh, Who's there? It 
here's an English tailor come hither to stealing from a French hose. Whoop! Oh, come in, tailor. Here you can rust your boots. No, no, no rest. What are you? But here, it's too cold for hell. I'll never pause no further. I have thought to let in some of all those professions that go the uh, primrose way of the everlasting bonfire. Hello. Hello. I pray you remember the porter. The examiner then wants you to show, when you analyse this extract, that you understand the extract develops its themes and ideas, the different emotions the characters are going through and why, and the language used in its deeper meanings. Common errors that occur in question 1A for the Macbeth paper, not making enough points, that is not using enough quotes and saying enough different things about the language being used, forgetting to make clear this is a play, not a book, and so repeatedly referencing to Shakespeare and the audience, and not showing how a theme grows, changes, or develops in each part of the script. You need to divide this into three pieces and look how a theme changes the more is said by the character. My essay plan <coughs> might include a brief overview, what Shakespeare wants to achieve at the start of the extract, how Shakespeare develops the theme by the middle of the extract, and what Shakespeare says about good and evil perhaps by the end of the extract. Where the start, middle and, and end are, well that's up to you. Here then is this extract in full with a clear overview at the beginning, starting with the word Shakespeare, the reference to the writer. Then going on to the beginning of the extract, you can see I've written at the start of the extract, Shakespeare creates an image of Macbeth's castle becoming like hell. I've then said what Porter of Hellgate confronts us with or reminds us of. Then I've looked at the use of the word Beelzebub and thinking why that word might be used. Then I've gone on to the middle of the extract. As the extract develops, Shakespeare uses satire. Um, I've used and analysed the word equivocator based on what you just saw in this video. And then lastly, I've looked at the phrase, I, I pray you remember the porter. Now, in this extract, I haven't really analysed. The closest I come is that reference to hell at the top from the porter of Hellgate. It is then a grade four answer, as I've got very few quotes in my response. Um, and I haven't really explained as much detail as I could have done or made enough points. If you look at the beginning of each paragraph at the start of the extract as the extract develops, I haven't really said how a theme develops either. What I've said is simply what happens in that part of the extract. So I might change this sentence here to as the extract develops, Shakespeare uses satire to appeal to his audience. This, this way breaks the tension even further um, as Shakespeare references the gunpowder plot. Um, so I would need to say phrases like even further or develops um, or, or deliberately uh, evolves the theme um, to make sure the examiner is really clear that I'm explaining how a theme changes through the extract itself. Same thing with the sentence here. By the end of the extract, Shakespeare simply reminds us um, would need to be adapted slightly to get the grade five by thinking then by the end of the extract how the theme of perhaps the supernatural has changed or developed even further. So here we have a basic grade four, lots of reference to the reader, lots of references to the writer, but the number of quotes um, is tricky and the amount of analysis that happens here also might need to be improved. I would suggest pause the video, make notes on this answer, then look back through this recording and find other quotes you could add to this response to change it into the grade five.
Now, all, most of the points I made there were all about the language choice. So what could I say about form and structure from this extract? Well, you need to be aware then, just as many marks go to form and structure as they do the language. So perhaps I could comment on the much less metaphorical language that the porter uses compared with the upper classes. He more or less says it how, he, how it is. He isn't attempting to confuse his audience through rhyming or wordplay, so it's his lack of rhyming that I'd want to focus on. And he's repeatedly interrupted by this knocking sound. Now we know that could be a reference to um, the best heartbeat um, earlier in or earlier in the play, or it could indeed be Macduff trying to break into the evil castle um, and find out what Macbeth is up to. Or indeed, the fact that it is Macduff knocking within could suggest that it's actually Macbeth's goodness trying to warn him not to go ahead with the deed. Thank you very much then for listening to this short video from the Shakespeare text Macbeth and linking to The Porter.